Mercury Cougar 1983 to 1988. For the 1983 model year, Mercury introduced the sixth generation of the Cougar. As part of an extensive revision of the Ford and Mercury model ranges, the midsize Mercury model range shifted from the Cougar to the Marquis, split from the full-size Grand Marquis. Reverting to its traditional role of a two-door coupe, for the first time since 1976, the Cougar remained a counterpart of the Ford Thunderbird with the two vehicles repackaged as luxury sport coupes. Within Mercury, the Cougar was slotted above the Capri and below the two-door Grand Marquis, both would be discontinued during its production. Along with marking the first major use of aerodynamic intensive design in an American automobile, the Cougar and Thunderbird were also the first Ford vehicles developed using computer-aided design, CAD. While given a less aerodynamic roofline than the Thunderbird, the 1983 Cougar was far sleeker than the 1982 Cougar X or 7, reducing its coefficient of drag from 0.50 to 0.40 in 1987, the sixth-generation Cougar underwent a mid-cycle revision with aerodynamic improvements, reducing its drag coefficient to 0.36. The sixth-generation Cougar retained the rear-wheel-drive Ford Fox platform from the fifth generation. In a departure from its predecessor, a shorter 104-inch wheelbase was used, four inches shorter than the previous XR7. As before, traditional Fox platform underpinnings were retained including a McPherson strut, a arm front suspension with a four-link coil sprung solid rear axle with front and rear anti-roll bars. As with the previous generation, 14-inch wheels and tires were standard, with Michelin TRX tires and metric size wheels as an option, shared with the Thunderbird and Capri slash Mustang. For 1985, 15-inch wheels became an option for the XR7. For its 1983 launch, the sixth-generation Cougar offered a 120-horsepower 3.8-liters V6 from its predecessor as a standard engine, a 130-horsepower 4.9-liters V8 made its return as an optional engine. For 1986, the V8 was changed to sequential fuel injection, increasing output to 150 horsepower. For 1988, the 3.8-liters V6 was given multiport fuel injection, increasing output to 140 horsepower. The 4.9 liters V8 was reached into 155 horsepower. From 1984 to 1986, the XR7 was equipped with a 2.3 liters turbocharged inline 4, shared with the Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. The engine produced 145 horsepower with an automatic transmission, 155 horsepower with a manual transmission. For 1987, the XR7 dropped the turbocharged engine, and 5-speed manual transmission, in favor of the 4.9 liters V8. The 2.3 liters inline 4 was paired with a 5-speed manual transmission, a 3-speed automatic transmission was optional. The 3.8 liters V6 was paired with a 3-speed automatic, a 4-speed overdrive automatic was optional, the only transmission with the 4.9 liters V8. For 1987 and 1988, the four-speed odd transmission was fitted to both the 3.8 liters and 4.9 liters engines. The exterior design of the sixth-generation Cougar was designed largely in response to the negative market response to the introduction of the fifth-generation Cougar. While retaining a common chassis, a primary objective for designers was to maximize the visual differentiation between the Thunderbird and Cougar. To reduce production costs. The two model lines shared exterior body parts, including front and rear bumpers, both doors, the windshield, the hood, and front fenders. While the Thunderbird adopted a fast back roof line, the Cougar adopted a notch back roof line with a near vertical backlight, distinguished by upswept rear side windows. During its production, the sixth generation Cougar underwent several exterior revisions. For 1984, the hood ornament was replaced by a flat hood emblem. For 1985, the waterfall style grille was replaced with an egg grate design, similar to Mercedes Benz. The red tail lamp lenses were replaced by a dark gray design. 1986 saw few changes, highlighted by the addition of a government mandated center rear brake light, CHMSL, 
and a power-operated moonroof. For the last time, the Cougar was available with vent windows. To mark its 20th year of production, the Cougar underwent an extensive mid-cycle revision for 1987. Originally slated for the 1986 model year, nearly every exterior panel was changed. To visually stretch the roof line, a compound curved rear window replaced the nearly flat rear glass and the rear quarter windows were redesigned, with a curve inversely matching the windshield angle. To further distinguish the model line from the Thunderbird, the 1987 Cougar received its own grille, with a large cat emblem, front bumper cover and aerodynamic composite headlamps. Shared with the Mustang GT, the Cougar received new 15-inch wheels, becoming the standard alloy wheel design for 1988. For 1988, the exterior of the Cougar underwent no changes, introducing several monochromatic paint options. For its 1983 launch, to lower production costs, the sixth-generation Cougar was required to carry over interior parts from the 1980-1982 Cougar XR7, including a modified dashboard, an analog instrument panel was standard, with a digital instrument panel offered as an option. For 1984, the steering column was redesigned, returning horn control to the steering wheel. As part of the introduction of the XR7, the model introduced an instrument panel including a tachometer and turbocharger boost gauge. For 1985, the interior underwent a complete redesign, with new door panels and dashboard, a redesigned rear seat expanded seating capacity to five passengers, four passengers with full-length console. The standard instrument panel was a digital speedometer with analog secondary gauges, a fully digital instrument panel was optional, the XR7 was given a fully analog instrument panel. For the 1987 model year, the Cougar saw a few changes to its interior, with the XR7 adopting a fully digital dashboard as standard equipment. For 1988, the analog XR7 dashboard made its return, along with the deletion of the boost gauge, the tachometer was revised for a lower revving V8 engine. The sixth-generation Cougar continued the trim nomenclature of its predecessor in modified form, with the Cougar GS serving as the base trim, the Cougar LS as the luxury trim, and the Cougar XR7 as the high-performance version. The GS trim was largely used for internal purposes, with advertising dropping the designation entirely. For 1987, to move the Cougar up market, the Cougar LS became the standard trim level with both V6 and V8 engines available. For 1984, the XR7 made its return after a year-long hiatus. Serving as the counterpart of the Thunderbird Turbo Coupe, the XR7 was fitted with a performance-oriented suspension, a turbocharged 2.3-liters engine, shared with the Turbo Coupe and Mustang SVO, blacked-out window trim, and full analog instrumentation. In 1987, to better distinguish the Cougar XR7 from the Thunderbird Turbo Coupe, the turbocharged inline 4 was replaced by the 4.9 liters, 302 cubic inches, Windsor 5.0 inches V8, along with a standard 4 speed automatic. For the 1987 model year, Mercury produced the Mercury 20th Anniversary Cougar as a commemorative edition. Derived from the Cougar LS, the 20th anniversary Cougar was produced in a near monochromatic exterior, Cabernet red with midnight smoke moldings, the wheels, all badging, and regular chrome trim were finished in 24 karat gold, with a gold trimmed C-pillar emblem. The trunk was fitted with a, non-functional, luggage rack. The 20th anniversary Cougar included the 4.9 liters, 302 cubic inches, V8 sport handling suspension with quad rear shocks, derived from the XR7, and 15-inch alloy wheels, from the Mustang GT, painted gold. Along with a limited slip rear axle, the only options offered were a power moon roof, power antenna, illuminated entry, keyless entry, automatic climate control, and an engine block heater. In total, Mercury produced 5,002 20th anniversary Cougars, 800 were reserved for Canada.